of Regan Slowmaker for International Boxing News, and I'm joined by the British Super Lightweight Champion Dalton Smith. Dalton, how are you today, mate? I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Well, let's get straight into it. So, last time out, we had a little bit of a chat off camera about um, your fight with Casey Benjamin. Obviously, I, I said it was. I thought it was a very dominant for, performance from yourself. Obviously, you, you're quite ill going into the fight. You had a chest infection. You're just saying you were struggling with it. Like kind of three weeks after. Yeah. Even the fight. How much did you learn from that fight against Casey Benjamin? Obviously, a very credible opponent as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I learned a lot in the fight, and um, you know, we we knew Casey was a good fighter before. Um, you know, up to that, we had, we did have a good camp. Um, you know, sometimes it's just one of those things you can get ill. Um, you can't help that, and you know, it's just um, you learn a lot by yourself that you know you can't be one hundred percent all the time. As long as you've got the confidence in your fitness, your ability, you know, just doing and get and get the job done. Um, you know, under the right circumstances, but. You know, we went in there, got the job done, and that's the main thing. Definitely. How important? Um, I've got a follow-up question to this, but how important is kind of obviously like not only you've got a very great trainer in Grant, but that he's also your dad as well. How how important is he like when? Because he he knows you better than anyone. So how is it? How important is he when he knows you're feeling ill, but then he still wants you to fight, he still wants you to defend. You know you want to win the title. Out. How important is he in in that whole process, kind of leading up to a big fight like that? You know, I think for him it's, you know, sometimes it could be an odd situation because it's his son getting in the ring and, you know, obviously he wants hope any of his fighters to be 100%, but, you know, there's only me, myself, who knows I'm able to do it. Um, you know, there's nobody who can know better than me. You know, my dad knows me better than anybody else, but it's only, like, nobody will know you internally better than yourself. Um, you know, and if I feel right and I feel you know I can get the job done I'll go and do it and you know my dad has full trust in me in anything I say you know believe me he knows I, I won't I'm not pulling his leg on anything so you know it's just about having the trust as well perfect and um, kind of moving on to that and obviously you're fighting on you're back out on March 18th kind of on the undercard of Leeward defending as well title against um, Rich Lara. you're fighting Billy Allington obviously it was a bit of kind of a bit of a surprise wasn't it when kind of the fight was just announced everyone was kind of expecting um, I know um, Akeem Ennis Brown had the title before you. That was a fight that was talked yeah. about. Sam Maxwell. Why? Why was um, Billy Angleton the right opponent for you next? He was in the right position. He just won the English, and um, and for me it was to you know I put it out there. I want the British uh, for keep. So you know I don't want to stay around the British scene too long. You know become stale. So you know plan was to you know get another two defences, quick defences um, for the belt. And Billy Allerton was you know. Up, up there with the top, he just won the English, so um, you know he's got he's got his opportunity there. He's earned his opportunity, and, um, and yeah, he got himself in a position to to fight for the British. Um, you know, and that's how the, the the fight got made there. Perfect. And then kind of obviously, you put a lot of stress kind of on you want the British title out, right? There's a lot of fighters they kind of win the British title and they'll kind of jump straight into like a world ranking kind of an international title and things like that. Why is it so important for you in your mind to win the British title out, right? It's just the history behind it and, you know, I've always said, you know, there's not many people who have a, a British title for keeps, you know, because like you said, they move on and stuff and, you know, I've always said when I get to the end of my career, I want to, I want to achieve everything I can and, and just, it's just a beautiful belt and the history behind it, um, you know, to, to have that in the family for, you know, for as long and as I'm alive and I can pass it on to the generations, it's something I don't, I've always wanted to do, so... Um, you know why not? Why not? No, definitely, and it is it is a very very good looking belt. I see it on the walls of gyms, and I want to take it off and take it out. <laughs> so no fair play to you, mate. There is um, one rumor, um, a kind of floating around the card that Sam Maxwell, a, f a fighter that I w that I just mentioned, kind of he's also fighting on the same night. Is that is that kind of a fight that's been proposed to you, or is that smoke and mirrors? Do you know much about that? <sighs> Who knows? We can see. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> um, you know, I've got one job to do on the 18th, and you know that's. Um, go out there and get a job done in style against Billy Allington, and you know then we'll see we'll see what happens after that. But you know I take each fight at a time, one fight at a time, and, um, and yeah I've got four weeks till my next fight, and that's that's all I concentrate on. Perfect, and definitely don't no no slip ups kind of on the exactly, way or anything yeah, like yeah. that. And um, and obviously Dalton, before kind of re-signing with Matchroom a few weeks ago. It's fair to say there was a bidding war go going on between uh, Boxer and Matram to get your signature. Kind of, I'm not going to kind of touch upon 
the reasons why I think about 300 people have asked you that same question. <laughs> but how important were your managers, Paul Reddy, Sean O'Toole, obviously your dad I know is very involved in it, how important were they in kind of helping you decide on that process? You know, that, that's that's their job, you know, to deal with the headache. <laughs> and, um, and honestly, I always say, everyone says they've got the best team around them, but you know what STN, um, you know, <coughs> Sean O'Toole, Paul Reddy, they're doing, it's... Um, you know, I, I believe they're the best in the game, um, and for what they're doing for me, I literally sit back and don't have to. I don't have to lift a finger. They deal with everything, and you know that's good for me because I can then concentrate on what I'm good at, and that's the fight. You know, I can train, and I don't have to deal with all the, you know, the other drama what goes on with boxing. Um, as long as I'm training 100%, um, concentrating on fighting, that's all I need to do, and and leave that side to. to you know, to my management team and my dad. So, honestly, they, they did a great job. They did a great, great job. No, perfect. And I think I was. I think I was at um, the One Nation gym with Sandy Ryan's coaches, and they were saying that kind of the same thing. For yeah. Just kind of obviously, Sandy's had a, a up and down year last year, yeah. but Paul Reddy, they didn't have to worry about the next few fights. They can just focus on it. And also, very important to kind of not. There's obviously a lot of horror stories in boxing with managers taking X and yeah. from each fight, but. I'm fair to say I've not heard a bad thing said about yeah. any of those at SDN. That's it, and especially those young fighters, especially when we come into the, you know, the professional game, it's all new to us. Um, obviously, I'm lucky. I've got my dad there, who's, you know, he's, he's a smart man. So, and it's just how everything fell into place. It's like I was meant to be with um, Sean O'Toole and STN. So, I don't know. They're, they're doing a great job, and you know, for the time they've been in the game, you know, they haven't been very long, and and. You know, they're probably up there with the best management team, especially in Britain at the minute, and the job they're doing with the fighters. And I think, you know, the, long, the longer they're in the game, you know, proves in the pudding. You can speak to any of the fighters, they'll say the same, and, um, and yeah, they're just good people. Perfect, as well. And then, kind of, I, I briefly touched upon it, obviously. Your dad's your, your dad is your trainer as well, and obviously heralded as one of the, if no one else will say it here, I'll say he's one of, one of the best trainers in the country yeah. as well. Um, but then I, one thing I did notice, kind of every single title you've won, you've dedicated it to what your family, but one man mainly in that, yeah. and that is your granddad as well. How important is your family when it when it comes to your boxing career? They're, they're a big influence on me because I wouldn't be in the position I'm now if it wasn't for them. And um, you know, my dad, what my dad's done, even from being young, you know, it must have been hard for him to, you know, to push me how he pushed me, you know from five, six years old, and when I were competing, 10, 11 years old, you know, making me get out of bed and go running at six o'clock in the morning before before school. Like, that's it's unheard of really in this day and age. And But, you know what? You know, at the time, my dad probably thought, you know what, is this even gonna pay off? You know, is he gonna rebel against me as he gets older? But, you know, that's the world we live in. It's, you know, it's, it's it's a it's a tough world, and sometimes you have to you have to you have to thicken that steel, and that's what he's done. And you know, I, I have to thank him every single day for the position I'm in. And now look at the journey we're on, just because you know he, he had that he had that um, you know he had that vision in his head when I was young. Obviously, when you're five six years old, you don't you know what life is like when you're older. Yeah. You don't know what's going to get thrown at you. But you know, he must have thought some he seen something in me and thought you know what, I'm going to push this kid as hard as he can. I'm gonna give him the best opportunities, and you know I have to thank him every single day for that. And you know my granddad was part of that journey. You know my granddad always wanted to fight. Obviously, he didn't have the opportunities when he was young. He wanted my dad to box. He got into football. You know, third time lucky, he got his grandson to do it. So you know I believe I'm living a life my granddad wanted to do, and he's living it through me. You know, and that's why he's everywhere on the journey with me. And anything I achieve, you know, obviously it was hard for my dad. Obviously, raising us as a single parent. Obviously, I had my nan and granddad there, so my granddad was the one. You know, if my dad couldn't get to the gym sometimes, you know, he'd, my granddad would be there taking me down. So anything I achieve, it's for it's for you know the full journey we've been on. Definitely, and I'm, I'm sure they're very proud of you, Dawn. Like, <laughs> I hope so. Of course, of course, definitely. <laughs> um, and kind of my, my final question, this is a very personal question, I don't think anyone else will care about this question apart from me. Mm. Um, you're a massive Arctic Monkeys fan, and so, and so am I. What is your favourite Arctic Monkeys song? It's going to be When the Sun Goes Down, you know, it's my ring entrance song. and um, Yeah, you know, it's one of those, it's obviously Sheffield born and bred coming up, 
um, Arctic Monkeys, obviously coming from Sheffield, obviously to support the same football team as me. You know, it just makes sense, and you know, it's it's, just good. it's obviously the top one of the top bands, aren't they? No, it definitely is, and definitely one of my favourite bands. Dawson exactly. Smith, thank you very much for your time today, yeah, mate. Appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you very much, top man.